So, hello, hello and welcome. Today we will be coding a code editor in Zig. If you don't know, Zig is a great programming language. It is uh, a better C and we can do all the kinds of cool stuff with it. Today we will be focusing on moving the cursor uh, and uh, yeah, let's begin. So uh, first I think let's uh, let's see what we have right now. Right now we can read a file, display it. I think we cannot resize it yet, right? Oh, we can resize it. Beautiful, so we don't really need to do anything with it. Well, we still have to do something because uh, we have to show the first line here, I think, when we resize. We want to show this line. But it will be done uh, further. For now, uh, let's just be happy that it doesn't crash like uh, it did with new curses. Alright, and uh, we can also type some letters. Let's try typing. You see at, at the very uh, at the very top, we can write something "Hello World," but uh, I will have to write it backwards, like uh, "World World Dollar O World," and uh, "Hello Hello O." Yeah, hello world. So we have it here. Now uh, our cursor is at the very bottom. And as I understand the terminal, this uh, pseudo terminal, virtual terminal that we have, it has uh, its own notion of a cursor. So it, it is in the state of this terminal. Uh, I'm a bit confused uh, how we are going to implement multiple cursors. It's going to be something very interesting because so far I have no idea how to even approach it. it. But uh, for now, with just a single cursor, it should be fairly straightforward. The terminal uh, has some escape codes, they're called. Let's make it bigger. And there are some escape codes for moving. Yeah, move cursor up n lines, down n lines, right, left. Not sure why it says lines. Left corner. It should probably say columns, I think. Okay, uh, let's uh, see, maybe cursor. Are there any other? Yeah, okay. Some other codes for the cursor. Oh, I think these are our uh, needed uh, codes. Cursor up and cursor up. Oh, okay. So it means that there are several codes that correspond to uh, cursor motion. They're not very diff different, right? They're just A with a param parameter. This is uh, how a parameter is applied uh, to uh, an escape code. We first write the arguments and only then we write uh, like a function name. Okay, so let's go with uh, these for now. They seem kind of simple and straightforward. So what uh, we should do? Well, first uh, thing is uh, that uh, we will have a model editor and it means that uh, it can have several modes. For example, uh, the cocoon editor, which I am using now, is a model editor too. And now when I press J, it moves the cursor up, down, right, left. This is what I want to implement. But at the same time, it has an insert mode. For example, if I press I, it, ins it uh, enters an insert mode. And now when I do uh, same things, it uh, types letters straight to the screen. Uh, 
for now we don't have a special place for the current mode so let's just make a <coughs> let's just make a global variable here var mode maybe current mode i usually like to be more uh, more explicit uh, i don't like the uh, heritage of the c language where every byte is uh, so precious that names are maybe several symbols okay okay let's uh, say that we have current modes uh, maybe even a boolean for now right current mode uh, is uh, insert and we will have it false as a default value okay so we have our global mode variable and now we have uh, this uh, event dispatcher which uh, is supposed to, to uh, look at all the possible events and uh, determine which action to do depending on, on the event it also has this kind of um, i think that uh, this recursion is a nice approach that we have a key press which dispatches another event insert key, insert character event and actually this insert character event is uh, going to uh, do the right thing to uh, insert this uh, in the terminal so this is where we should do our if else branch with the mode so um, let's use this condition for now it's just a debug condition i uh, use a custom not custom just self-written code to uh, to parse the keys which are pressed in terminal it is uh, ec extra interesting i i can say uh, let's write if current mode is insert so if we're in the insert mode we do this what we have for now we just insert uh, we just send a new event uh, for the dispatch and it inserts a character for now we don't even specify where it's just an 100 offset means uh, the at the position of 100 it will insert a character and else uh, let's see so now we can we can switch on the value that we get well dot utf8 first and uh, we will just uh, switch if it is h we move left um, move left um, we so far we don't have uh, a special mm, like a special uh, place f to keep all our commands uh, that we can uh, actually uh, perform uh, this event dispatcher thing I think should be responsible only for the events but uh, for com comments we should also have something similar i did not yet uh, create uh, a structure for this so we should go with something like i guess it should be move right it would go like uh, maybe we can have uh, a general uh, move function somewhere yeah, let's just draft a function to move other fan move course so okay so we have this somewhere ah it is in the ui so we have uh, in the ui we have a uh, function move cursor which just takes raw column and moves it there although i'm not sure does it uh, take like an absolute raw or relative to the upper left corner of the screen well we will see Okay, so we can use this function, I believe, or not. I can we use this function? Let's try to see, is this going to compile? Like, uh, so void and just do nothing. So are you going to compile? 
Sweet. Okay, we can do that. Just uh, uh, print this one. So character sequence longer than one byte, and we can type unknown unknown. Oh, okay, let me do it carefully. Unknown. Yeah. Command. And we want to see a character, the very first character. Okay. Can you compile? Okay, so we can compile, we can use this uh, function name. I was a bit worried about the collisions. Okay, uh, so move cursor. This uh, function should take uh, a UI, I believe for it to tell uh, the terminal screen uh, to actually move then it uh, should mm, take a direction i believe some kind of uh, const move direction like so and it will be up, down, left, right. And we, we can also have some special things in here, like move to the beginning of a line, move to the end of a line. But uh, for now, I think we can live without them. Direction, move direction and uh, a number right a modifier that uh, will supply when we want to move several uh, several places at a time like uh, just number right direction number or like a quantity okay let it be just number and we will use u32 Okay, so now we will tell the UI to move the mouse. Oh, sorry, move the cursor. Tell the UI move cursor. And do we use uh, same things here? Maybe it's just a function from the UI module. Like uh, so. Maybe a move direction, I don't know where it should be, so maybe we can keep it at top level for a while. And this we just put inside the UI. Okay, mm. it takes self. Self. And... Uh, okay, so now mm, this is a UI and abstraction like um, a general uh, UI the idea is that we can have uh, several user interfaces uh, and for now we have a single backend I just like terminals so I started with this with this backend and maybe this backend this backend can provide us uh, some functions about moving uh, maybe right left up bottom Okay, so I think this should live in here. It is closely related to this function. And uh, since uh, we have uh, separate codes for our backend to implement, they will be separate. We should have a switch in the UI abstraction, I believe. Or let me think, uh, we should also consider that uh, it can be used in other backends. And it also makes sense to do this switch case uh, in uh, the. Yeah, to do this switch case uh, in the UI backend as well. Maybe let's do it a bit uh, simpler. 
it's not really simpler, I think, but uh, at least it makes it makes sense to me. And we just pass a direction and the number. And also add try, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so now well, since we just forward it to the backend, uh, yeah, uh, I think this UI should be abstract and uh, moving a cursor is not uh, does not entail any specific actions you should take. So mat two uh, three bar says UI should only handle move cursor event and the keyboard get the inputs. Uh, move cursor and the key. Mm, this is also a bit, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, the keyboard should get the input. This is correct, but uh, we have this keys, which uh, I suppose uh, should be something like parsing. We will parse the keys, I mean, not parse, but it is a structure for the keys. But since uh, key parsing is uh, very backend specific, for example, mm, here, let me show you. It should be somewhere here. Uh, next key a function, yeah, next key. For example, here we get the next byte from standard input, and here in the next key, uh, we also account for some codes. For example, three is when you press Control C. So we construct a key like Control C, and otherwise we just pass an ASCII symbol. So since uh, the key uh, handling, like getting the key, is very backend specific, uh, it leaves uh, for now here. Keyboard Z get inputs. Mm, yeah, I think I answered this question that uh, since it is backend specific, I would like to keep it in the UI part, like a UI backend. Yeah, I believe in frameworks, uh, KSDL, uh, GTK, this can be uh, very different because terminals is like a real, uh, I mean, very uh, separate uh, beast, like uh, off and in itself. Uh, now uh, so there is uh, let, let, let me show you maybe this there is a cocoon uh, terminal editor and uh, which I use actually this this one is a in cocoon editor and it has uh, some uh, key parsing this is key parsing and uh, it's like uh, maybe 400 lines long and there is RxVT style Tmax style and there are some Kitty specific parsing for Kitty terminal. It's just uh, wild west of terminals. They don't have uh, one real uh, standard. They they have like ANSI standard, but they differ in very different things. And uh, in future we will have to account for them. Okay, so we were moving the cursor. So since uh, we want the uh, same uh, function signature, say nature, signature I believe is the correct pronunciation. We can just uh, put it uh, at the very bottom, M maybe a little bit higher since it is a public function. Bob fn move cursor. So we take self. I'm not sure if we need to change our state as... Yeah, the state changes, but uh, do we and do we record it somewhere? Or well, at least we uh, eat. Uh, do we eat some input or output stream? Mm. Okay, let's uh, let's try without uh, a star, without a pointer, and if we need, we will just add it. And now move direction. Yeah, let's uh, make it global for now. And where were we? Here. Now we will switch. Okay. Valig O says it's not less. <laughs> yeah, I believe GUI world is also wild. Um, I'm very cautious uh, about GUI stuff. I know it's very hard. For example, I saw like uh, 
so many uh, uh, things uh, Rust uh, tries uh, to uh, say, like a new blog post, or it's a new UI, new UI, and so maybe for five years, new UI, uh, like uh, a shock in use, like that. Really funny. I guess it's really, really hard to do. Okay, if we get up, is this how we write? Uh, up, then we do, we just print uh, to the stream. We get our self raw writer. Raw writer uh, just uh, writes uh, without any escaping uh, to the uh, output, um, to the out, to the standard output, right? Yeah, we have some implementation of uh, buffered uh, uh, buffered style, so we don't have to redraw all all the stuff like uh, character by character, but just uh, throw it all in the buffer and uh, render it once. So we have some performance and avoid flickering. And uh, we have a writer uh, for like uh, it auto inserts this carriage return so that it is uh, expected behavior when we want to put something. And raw writer is just uh, for escape sequences mainly. Okay, Valigo says, and I think handling inputs in terms of UI implementation might be a good choice if you consider UI implementation as a separate platform that you support. Uh, yeah, yeah, I fully agree with that. Uh, in my implementation, I'm trying to make a modular uh, design so that we can have uh, uh, separate uh, front ends for a single back end, uh, kind of uh, Xi or Xi. Yeah, I probably know this editor. Uh, is this somewhere here? It's an overview. Yeah, this editor. It was a very hyped editor. I saw the author, or maybe author of the project, uh, on the conferences uh, talking about it, and uh, it has uh, some good documentation uh, thoughts about how, how it was designed, and uh, one of its ideas also was separate backends. Raw. Right. Uh, right. Oh. Okay, so yeah, maybe we just uh, can uh, do it uh, in a private function as well. Why else nothing? So we have here some function move cursor. So it is a move cursor like uh, at uh, any position. Yeah, we move it to the very beginning before we clear the screen, or I mean after we clear the screen, so we can write something more. And now let's just move cursor up, self, and uh, number, year 32, void, try self, writer, and we print. If we have a number, we print one. If we don't have, we don't print it. Or we can just print it as well, right? We can print here the number. Here is that. Yeah, we can just print one in uh, any case. Okay, so it's a bit different still because it doesn't, it's not actually a CSI as I understand. Because it lacks the second uh, left uh, square bracket. So this is CSI sequence control introducer. We probably want to go always with CSI. As I understand it is uh, widely adopted standard. Let's uh, console codes cursor escape 7. Okay and so yeah, in ECMA 84, it, or, uh, in ECMA 48, which is a um, widely adopted standard, uh, there are some keys and it requires a CSI, which means, uh, okay, I'll, I'll just uh, do it here. So we do print 
Now we put CSI. I'll control sequence introduce. So it is, yeah, it's just these bytes. First one is escape when you press escape and uh, square bracket. Then we go with CSI, then square bracket, square bracket, then the number. And for up, we do cursor up A. Yeah, we do A here. Okay, move cursor up and here we write move cursor up. Okay, uh, let me make sure that we move the cursor up actually. Where is that? H, no, it should be K for up. And we do self UI. Yeah, we can dispatch, but let's for now uh, not create a new event and just do it the simplest way. No, self UI move cursor. Okay, language server error. That's not good, but we can handle that. So direction and number. Direction up, dot up, and number one. Okay, Valigo says, yeah, it was hyped a lot, but died under its own complexity. Yeah, it's about the Xi editor. Yeah, I understand, understand. It had some good outcomes though, so it didn't die for nothing. Yeah, uh, I also really liked uh, reading about the documentation and uh, different stuff. Uh, like very good uh, rope science, uh, how to use rope architecture. I kind of want to do the uh, same thing, but uh, n without uh, crazy async stuff. I believe that if I'm tr if I try to do it in with uh, asynchronous input output server client communication, it will just become ten times harder, and <laughs> I don't think I'm that good yet. <clears throat> Okay, so when we press K and it is uh, false, we should see that our cursor moves up. Okay, let's try to compile it. All right, all right. So, five, three, four. Okay, move cursor, di direction, number. Okay, now one oh three self UI. So we don't have a UI, do we? Um, uh, well, why don't we have a how do we even do it? Uh, self text buffer display windows, and uh, do we do something in the UI? Yeah, I believe we we have it in display window. Okay, let's not introduce a new uh, like uh, coupling and just reuse uh, this one here. And then we have not all possibilities. Looks like this large redefinition of move cursor. Okay, five six. Seven. Move cursor. Move cursor up. And where do we have it? Five three one. Okay. Mo well, I kind of want to read if. Oh, I see. It is same backend, so uh, it it's not so far away. We have it here and uh, also here. So how do we call it? Uh, this is move cursor, which is uh, straight li st strictly like uh, this line here. So it makes total sense to name this uh, low-level handling function like move cursor. But uh, this one move 
cursor to uh, okay maybe we can uh, fall back to the C style move curse <laughs> doesn't sound very good uh, maybe okay naming is like the hardest part of uh, programming I think I spend so much time on it but uh, usually it pays off uh, especially when team members uh, agree on this part yeah unusable macro abbreviations go brrr <laughs> Uh, move cursor maybe we can uh, add something here okay we have move cursor which is a low level function and uh, we can have like erase display and okay I, I don't know for now let's uh, try just to come up with it later move cursor to a perfectly valid name we will need to redefine it just in one place here. Maybe later I will have a nice idea. Try catch. Yeah, of course we can use that. Try. And then 54. Use of undeclared, undeclared identifier UI. Self UI, I believe. Okay, self backend and direction found move direction. Move cursor up. Okay, five three four. Direction number and uh, what's up with that? Self number. Oh, I see. I see. We already dispatched on the direction. Okay, our compiler tries really hard for us to not mess up. Found const. Okay, so it, it means we need a star. Okay, <laughs> 534, what did we forget? Error is ignored. Okay. Okay, moment of truth. I press K. Nothing happens. Oh. We'll have to debug that. Uh, okay, so uh, debugging is also a bit hard because uh, I actually don't know how to debug properly because this in here it takes uh, standard output. So when I uh, try to output something to standard error, it also uh, sends it kind of here, but it is not shown here, so I have no idea. And usually it prints something at the very end when this program stops. Uh, when I stop it with std os exit, then it prints uh, from the standard error. I guess it just flashes first standard output, which is this, and then standard uh, error. But uh, how to debug it live? No idea. <laughs> also, LLDB doesn't work here. I didn't manage to make it work. I guess there are some introductions how to make it because new cursors use the same kind of idea. And I believe it's pretty popular. Maybe we can find something, but uh, I didn't try to find it yet. Okay, so uh, why it doesn't print? Let's uh, go to the call sites and see uh, where does it even go? Do we even uh, get uh, our event dispatcher to uh, catch this event? Okay, we can just uh, mess up with our code and uh, press uh, set random, uh, maybe std os exit one. Maybe unreachable even. Yeah. Okay, do we reach unreachable when we press K? Beautiful. Okay, next one. Uh, move cursor. Do we reach here? And perfect. Okay, let's go next. What about here? Do we reach this one? Unreachable. And press K. Perfect. Now move cursor up. Do we reach here?
perfect we reach here now uh, what uh, uh, what can we do uh, we can uh, debug it I guess from the terminal from here uh, we can just try I guess we have uh, this is CSI sequence this is bracket number and a CSI bracket number and a okay what if we use it without the number move cur let's uh, create uh, a move cursor up to and we will just use this code cursor from here without CSI just uh, I mean uh, yeah just without CSI this is just escapes uh, character what about this one cursor up to and we don't need a number here and uh, here we use move cursor up to and nothing here save all right let's go okay Oh, and used this this new zip compiler which uh, manages all the unused stuff. Sometimes it's a pain. And five three one. So how do we deal with that? Move cursor to. Okay, let's. Uh, yeah, let's uh, move cursor 3, beautiful, without the number, and here, and here, and uh, here we have move cursor 2, without the number, and here we use move cursor 2, without the number. Expected three, found two. Oh my gosh, D sec expected three, found two. Okay, I'm not sure I can, <laughs> because of this, uh, all the structure that I made, uh, I tried to, to design this uh, beforehand, so that uh, I have a clear vi clearer vision of what's going to be next and how to separate uh, each modules and this is what I get in return expected three arguments found two move cursor three okay k k doesn't work okay uh, maybe we can do some other stuff if it didn't work let's revert it back yep yep here and now eh. okay so good uh, let's think how can we debug it mm. well we have uh, we have this move cursor function how about we try to use uh, that Maybe we can uh, get an insight of what's going on. Let's uh, right after that we will use this function, and I believe we have it used already somewhere. And yeah, in the clear function, I guess there is some interaction that. Uh, I, it does automatically and I am not fully aware of it. Maybe you can instead just uh, try to uh, follow the kind of stack trace of the program, how it uh, processes, processes events, right? So here we get our while loop, which uh, sleeps for some time and tries to get a key. 
then it, if it is a Unicode code point, for now it is just ASCII symbols. We stop on Control C. Does it still work? Yep, it's, it works. And else we do an event dispatch and we dispatch our event and we don't do anything else. Okay, let's uh, uh, go here. So we dispatch an event, it is a key press. Now we should uh, move to this branch and we uh, did uh, we did confirm that uh, it is executed because we placed here unreachable statement. Then this move cursor is here. We just uh, forward it to the backend and backend forwards it here. So stack trace is pretty clean. <laughs> this is a problem because it would be much easier if, if uh, we found some error here. Okay. Let's uh, try. Uh, let's uh, try that one. Move cursor self dot move cursor, and uh, we say row maybe fifteen and column one. Let's press K. Yeah, still nothing happens. Do we have some extra input? For example, if we do like so, and now we run it. So, oh, I see. So, uh, we kind of, ah, we, we just clear the screen, right? If we write a lot of uh, F character, Okay, I thought that uh, we uh, did some uh, things like copying it all over and over again so that we don't see it. Let's uh, use uh, shorter lines so that we don't have all the screen uh, um, all the screen filled with this thing. I have here long lines. Okay, when we press K nothing happens. Still nothing. Okay, this might be harder than I thought. Mm, maybe we can get some insight from here. So this is Cocoon source code. Maybe we can have uh, some insight how it does its things. Maybe while searching for a bracket. And uh, yeah, maybe we can just search for A. Is not a very uh, often character, I believe. We should find some printf statement where we print this in a code to move the cursor. Okay, so we didn't do that. Uh, let's then try uh, searching a bit more for cursor leftwards and up move the cursor we just got the wrong uh, control codes for that this is, this is c0 controls uh, does it have csi no i don't think so okay maybe here Cur okay we we actually know that uh, the sequence should be uh, correct because uh, we got it from here. Move cursor up the indicated number of rows of columns. Okay, it means that uh, I don't have a clear understanding of uh, how the cursor, it, how the terminal operates the cursor state. I think I will have to do some research on it and uh, try to understand why it doesn't work. Uh, somewhere offline because I don't seem to be uh, getting any progress at this point. Okay, so apparently moving cursor is a hard thing to do. Okay, so maybe we can just commit that as a to-do item. Yeah, we can just uh, change the mode here. 
to true so we can uh, type some letters let's try it okay yeah we can type something beautiful okay let's uh, commit that with a to do to do we need to uh, try to figure maybe not uh, a commit right maybe uh, a git stash but no since i'm the only one who can uh, contribute i just can control it no matter try to figure out why the cursor doesn't move okay i believe it has something to do with how we do the render yeah, maybe it uh, doesn't want uh, to interact with it somehow or there is also some black magic here with all these settings and yeah, maybe uh, I'm just doing something wrong here these are four very old terminals uh, which were kind of hardware terminals and uh, here just uh, you just put some flags and hope for the best this is the best uh, set of flags I could find. Let's try to do one more thing. Let's try to do this thing. So here when we run our text our cursor is at the very bottom and uh, I would like it to be at the very top here at 1. Yeah. I want this cursor to be here at 1 uh, and uh, to do so we will try to do this thing we will hide our cursor then we will draw everything we have then we will show our cursor and uh, it can it can be here in the first line because it was hidden when it was printing so let's hope for the best let's try to do that so how about show and hide it is with a question mark i believe yeah here default on make cursor visible with escape right bracket question mark 25 h and h i believe is for high because in order to uh, it is enable and in order to disable you need to pass L which is like low well it is my uh, intuition at least let's try uh, just add these functions first fn hide cursor self and we don't need to pass any parameters Draw writer dot write all of prints. We still need the CSI here, and we go with question mark twenty five L for hiding. Question mark twenty five L. Okay. CSI and Valigo says. Why are you hiding show the curse instead of moving it to zero zero? Uh, there is uh, it uh, just for flickering, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure how the state, how the terminal operates its state of the cursor. So uh, if I hide it and I print something, does the cursor move? I have no idea. No, 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 uh, you understood it correctly. Uh, I just uh, don't have uh, a clear understanding of how the uh, cursor works. My suggestion is that if we hide it, print it and show it, maybe it will be at the same place. I doubt so, but uh, let's try that. Uh, this is for hide and this is for show. It's also for reducing the flickering. When we have a cursor and it uh, prints a lot and it and the terminal speed 
the speed of printing the characters is slow we will see a moving cursor that will print uh, when when something prints the cursor is at the very end so it like appends and we will see a cursor moving like line by line printing something and with it, when it is not slow but not also fast we'll have this flickering effect where we see some like maybe four frames of cursor in different places so it's just for avoiding the flickering in the first place but we will also know some internals how it works whether our cursor will be at the very end or at the very big at the very beginning of the stream okay so hide cursor and show cursor okay and we can uh, just use it here uh, yeah i believe we can just do it like so backend hide cursor and defer try self no we can't uh, try with defer is correct yeah maybe we can just uh, do it at the very end try self backend show cursor Okay, Valigo says, oh, understandable. Imagine supporting anything slower than alacrity. Well, yeah, cur current terminals uh, like super fast, uh, and we probably wouldn't see this flickering. But it uh, can also depend uh, on uh, other factors uh, like SSH. Yeah, if you do something through SSH. Uh, this uh, so-called uh, baud rate is quite slow okay okay we have some troubles the definition of height cursor five seven eight okay i just did it two times okay <laughs> Hide cursor, let's try to compile it. Okay, so uh, we will hope that something worked. It doesn't seem like so, but we added something. We can still compile it. Let's commit it. Hide and show cursor between rendering. Okay. Tools bus says what is more responsive for pass screen uptime so it depends on the metrics updates ah for updates uptimes so it depends on the metric what do you mean by food um, I'm not sure I understand uh, maybe it is also some uh, auto correct thingy or on this uh, Mac stuff, I believe. On my on my Mac, I have an i iPad Mini. It also uh, auto corrects all the technical words I'm trying to write, so I just gave up and I don't use it for writing, just watching. I think this one. Okay, let, let's let's see. Copy link. Is this legal? Yeah, yeah, it seems legal. A fast violin terminal emulator. Okay. So it is uh, a violin emulator. Okay, let I believe I can try that. When I go to violin, I haven't heard of it, of it before. But it's uh, almost uh, like four and a uh, half thousand commits. I guess uh, people put some uh, work in it. Okay, so we just committed our showing and hiding cursor. Uh, now let's move it to the very beginning. Uh, there are two. Uh, two possible solutions. Uh, there are codes for saving. No, it's a report. There is also save cursor position and restore. Yeah, here. 
we have uh, save course allocation and restore course, course allocation. This is how we would want to do it uh, when we do actual rendering because we want to save it, we want to hide it, we want to render all the scene and we want the cursor to be in the same place where it was before. But uh, we should also solve our mystery with the, this function. Can we actually move it uh, to the very first position at the end of the render function? Right? Uh, so let's go to render. I believe we in clear we do that. Yeah, let's go here, just copy, erase display. Of course, uh, refresh. Well, thinking about it, I think we forgot to refresh. Yeah, this is why the cursor doesn't move. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, well, we have uh, this needs a bit of explaining, right? Uh, we have this raw unbuffered writer, which uh, is just you write something and outputs directly. Then we have raw buffered writer, so that uh, we f now when we write we always have a buffer and we write to this buffer and only only when this buffer is uh, overfilled like four kilobytes I think or when we say dire directly flush your uh, content to the output it writes something I believe this is the problem we just didn't say to flush the content this is why the cursor didn't move. Okay, the mystery is solved. So let's first uh, still move the cursor at the very first position. We say refresh. Yeah, we say show cursor before refresh because uh, all these commands, uh, they kind of seem like uh, uh, you say and it does something, but it actually outputs something to the buffer. So we really need to flush it out in order to uh, like perform a command. Now let's uh, try self backend move cursor. Uh, we want to. Why does it show me like uh, here? Uh, it shows for show cursor. No, we need move cursor. And not direction, but with absolute position. Yeah, just one one. Okay. Move cursor one one. Okay, and all right, all right. We have something. So here we have uh, our. Uh, it is high, so it is show cursor. Cursor. We are doing something wrong, but uh, still. Okay, Velga says. I mean, uh, 100 stars on Codeberg is a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I believe so on Codeberg. And for something as niche as native Wayland stuff. Well, you know, native um, uh, Wayland stuff was niche maybe uh, five, six years ago. I believe now it's kind of uh, this hipster thing, right? Uh, new kids uh, love Wayland because it's something new not uh, 50 years of uh, Xorg uh, her legacy and heritage so it's uh, new kids kind of like new stuff and uh, I believe I'm also a new kid because I also used Wayland it has this bug that I couldn't really refresh um, share the screen like full screen and I had problems with that uh, yeah, I had problems with that, uh, and I really needed me. I really needed it for my work, so I switched to Xorg, and uh, this one is uh, W3M, right? This is how it's called. Oh, it's W3M. I think W3M is a browser, actually. Okay, I believe you know. It's like uh, I3M. Yeah, like IVM. I can't. I can't. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, last couple of years really hyped. I agree with that. 
height cursor, show cursor. Why? So what's wrong with that? Uh, why do you print this stuff? Okay, maybe we are doing something a bit wrong. Escape bracket question mark twenty five H. Mm. So everything seems fine. Maybe uh, we can do like so and so now it's here <laughs> so I didn't manage to at least I managed to move the cursor at the very first position I believe uh, so okay maybe what if we just don't do that does it really hide the cursor because uh, we tell it to hide the cursor. Yeah, it doesn't even hide the cursor. Uh, maybe this clear stuff is a bit wrong. Yeah, we do erase display, move cursor, refresh. Maybe we should do it like so. Let's try. Okay, so now at least it shows us uh, 25L. <laughs> Why? What does refresh do? Says Veligo. Uh, refresh, uh, let's see what it does. Uh, FN refresh. We say self, buffet, write a CTX, flush. So we flush all the stand all the buffer content we flush it to the output. So this is our way of saying okay, we uh, re we have written enough data to the buffer, now it's time to display it on the screen. Something like that. Okay, um let's uh let's try to write them one by one. Does it have any effect? Okay, so we have it here. Yeah, maybe I'm doing something wrong because uh, escape does maybe. No, it still says escape. Oh, maybe <laughs> I guess I understand. Yeah, I'm I'm putting a I'm putting an extra this symbol. It says escape and right bracket, left bracket. Uh, this is very easy to mess up, right? This one is CSI, right? Uh, let me show you. Const CSI, yeah? Here, this is CSI. This uh, byte is an escape byte, so it is here. And this is left bracket, with it, which is also part of CSI. And it says uh, CSI and then just this command. But uh, we put an extra left bracket where we shouldn't do that. So one here and one here. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, seems okay. So now we do we like so, like so. Yeah, like so. We hide cursor, then we clear all the screen, then we do our rendering stuff, we move cursor to again to the very first position, and we show it. Let's try. Okay, seems working fine. Seems, seems fine. Seems fine. Let's add commit. Show. Um, maybe uh, hide or what did we do actually we already did the commit on show and hiding yeah maybe just uh, fix uh, CSI C not CSI just fix commands for show hide yeah, good enough Velaga says, ah, so you render to some kind 
of a back buffer first. Yeah, uh, yes, that is correct. Uh, I think uh, maybe in the future, like uh, for those uh, maybe slow terminals like SSH, uh, new curses, uh, a popular library for this 2E stuff of, of what I'm trying to do, it uh, does a technique uh, which it calls uh, double buffering or double rendering. So the idea is that they have like first buffer uh, and the second buffer and uh, when they do rendering they try to understand uh, which key uh, which sequences they need to send minimal amount of sequences so they diff uh, first buffer with the second so do you see my hands yeah maybe i should show it here because the camera is very small so two buffers yeah if you are familiar with uh, web development it is basically what react does yeah different algorithm or it is uh, i believe it is also similar for sdl you know this open jail stuff graphics stuff uh, it uh, the same 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 idea about this double buffering technique Okay, do I still have internet? Yeah, I just have uh, bad connection sometimes and my sequences have broken. Let's just recreate the terminal. Kisa and yeah, a little bit bigger and yeah, maybe a little bit more bigger. Okay, so now let's uh, finish our quest on uh, moving the cursor up. So what we need to do is put here, else we do something and we do refresh. Self, yeah, this here, we just do a refresh instead of anything else. Refresh. Okay, here we set it to false and the moment of truth. Okay, so now let's just refresh instruct UI. Okay, maybe we can do it uh, inside the move cursor. It also makes sense. Try self backend refresh. Let's go. And okay, we are at the very up so <laughs> moving up just inserts an a symbol well it's better than nothing it's better than previous attempts at least one a so i guess we just uh, didn't do the sequence correctly again maybe a left bracket is missing or something yeah uh, velega says yeah double buffer is basically what everyone Apart from X11, what are doing in Valent, it's even a part of the protocol, if I recall correctly. I bet on an extra bracket. Yeah, yeah, extra bracket. About Valent, I'm not sure. Uh, I heard that uh, in Valent they use this kind of direct rendering where they have just a specific uh, memory region, they modify it and it uh, goes to the screen. Uh, so I'm not sure how you would efficiently implement double buffer, double buffering if uh, you have a direct memory access. Well, actually, yeah, yeah, there are some ways. It's not really uh, like t that technical to implement it. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, it also makes sense to do it in a new, new like uh, technology because it's fun to implement some uh, complex technologies if, even if it um, doesn't matter on the uh, like uh, modern uh, modern computers you can always say ah oh, it's for the old things which run slowly but it's also really fun for example for now here in my editor i have this text buffer and it's not a gap buffer, it's not a piece table, it's not a rope. Yeah, just three uh, most popular uh, backend uh, like uh, data structures that are used for the buffers. I just have a simple, uh, uh, where it is? Yeah, here. Simple STD array list, array of bytes. And I just uh, move uh, 
everything uh, one uh, character forward when I insert something in the middle. Yeah, <laughs> just most uh, silly, stupid technique. <laughs> Okay, let's find our extra character and maybe let's uh, do it with move cursor down because we want to actually see the effect and not see uh, another stack trace. Let's implement down and let's... Here we just uh, forward uh, move cursor yeah, we just forward direction. So we need event dispatcher and we need to copy this. So down is J, letter J. Okay, now let's try to modify this down command. Move cursor down. So move cursor down to column 1. No, just down. Move cursor down indicated number of rows. Okay, B. Okay, B. B and action of a CSI sequence by its final character. So we have here CSI, escape and left bracket. So our escape don't need that bracket here. Don't need that bracket here. Number and letter B. Okay. Let's see. J. Nothing happens. K nothing happens. Okay, it is uh, a bit worse than previous time, but uh, maybe there is a good reason. Do we refresh? Let's see. Do we do refresh? Move cursor. So we don't refresh here, but do we refresh here? Yes, we do refresh here. Okay, maybe. Mm -hmm. So, what could, what else could be wrong? What else could be wrong? Um, it also could be this uh, sequence. Maybe we're not doing it correctly. But at this point, I believe we do everything we want. Okay. Set keyboard, let's. Let me read this a bit. Maybe there is some truth we need uh, to understand. Okay, so it doesn't say anything particularly interesting for us. The action. Okay, so we are kind of making progress. You say move key. Maybe uh, what could else be wrong? Let's try with our SRC main. Okay, so nothing here too. Okay. A riddle for Jacques Fresco, I believe. Move cursor, move cursor down. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Maybe this somehow contributed to our failure. Hmm. 
Oh, beautiful. Do you see it? Let's let's make it on this file. Yeah, let's make it history. Oh, so great. Great. We can move up and down. And really uh, anywhere. Not even bothering the raw lines, no lines. Yeah, let's uh, add the left and right. I believe this is uh, uh, logical uh, continuation. So we have A, B, C, what C? C is right. Okay, let's do right. And left is going to be D, I believe. Yeah, it's D. A, B, C, D. Okay, let's go to our dispatch. We don't need else here. We just copy that. And we go right, here right, and here left. Left, all right, up, down, right, left. Let's uh, modify our dispatch, er, dispatcher. Yeah, here, and we go. So right is going to be L. And left is going to be H. Okay, let's play a bit. Yeah, we can move the cursor up, down, left, right. All right, that's great. Beautiful. And uh, yeah, let's uh, commit this. Cursor moves up, down, right, left. Great. And uh, let's do one more thing. I would like to change the mode uh, to insert. So on I we get to insert mode and uh, on uh, not escape maybe on Q for now because I'm not sure how to I don't know how to parse escape correctly there are some difficulties with the escape key because uh, escape byte yeah you saw that here in const CSI yeah here yeah, this one is actually a byte which is sent when you press an escape key. So an escape key is kind of uh, crucial uh, in a number of ways. Uh, for example, it, it sends some controlling codes to the terminal with the CSI. So for example, when you press escape key, uh, we should also wait is there a left square bracket. If he has this is CSI code, or if they're like uh, in the the lib term key, which is a Vim library for handling keys, it uh, says like so, because uh, this this byte, and if you get like A, right, this can be uh, two uh, two possibilities how this can happen. First one when you press escape and you press A, yeah, you press escape. And you get this A. Second is when you press Alt A. When you press Alt A, it actually encodes it like so. Yeah, I think I can actually show that scene. Run, yeah. So I have here a little program. When you press a key, it uh, says uh, the bytes. Yeah. So we have here this one. Yeah. Now I pressed Control L C. Okay, let's just get A. This is A. This is Escape, and this is uh, Alt A. 
Yeah, you see it's like uh, this is A, this is escape, this is alt A. So kind of weird, right? So this is a problem we'll have to deal with, but a bit later. For now, let's just implement it with Q. Okay. Uh, key press. And we get uh, to this branch. If current mode is insert, we dispatch insert character. Or uh, if well dot utf eight zero is q we say current mode is insert no no more else like so and same stuff here when we press i we want to enter insert mode we say insert mode is true. Okay, let's test that. Okay, so we already got uh, some strange stuff which was here before. Did we mess up something? Git uh, stash to just try it with. So okay, so it means that we did something which uh, we shouldn't uh, do right here, which should be fine. Let's make it a bit smaller. So we added here. Ah, I see. I, see. I changed it here. I forgot to change it back. Four, four, one. Like so. Okay. And we can move around. Now when we press I, we entered insert mode and we can type some characters. Yeah, fine. We don't care about where they are typed and that our cursor is moved to the very first position. It's just temporary and we press Q and we can move our cursor again. Beautiful. So yeah, let's commit that. Uh, going in and out of insert mode. All right. Yeah, that's scuffed. Scuffed uh, um, I'm not sure what scuffed means. Let me translate it, or may maybe trans, and maybe meaning meaning. We can say n n scuffed, scrape or brush the surface against something, or like, like scratched, like rough. Okay, okay. All right. So. Uh, I believe uh, we can uh, stop with that. We did some progress. And uh, I usually try to keep uh, things I do on, on video scoped. And for now, I believe we reached uh, some uh, good point. I think in the future, uh, future I would like to do maybe handling this uh, mode a bit better uh, so that uh, we can use escape to quit like in other popular model editors then we can probably yeah i, I think it is it and uh, i will also need to research uh, i'm currently researching some client server architecture uh, how we can implement that uh, basically i want this main function to uh, launch a server process and uh, currently be on the client uh, process so it needs some fork uh, some linux stuff i'm currently reading about that and i will hope to implement it soon and we will also need some uh, more clear separation between server and the client 
But uh, for now, I believe this is kind of decent uh, API surface, so we can start abstracting it into different layers. Uh, maybe we should add something else. So the idea behind that is uh, that we want uh, to have some API, API surface uh, uh, covered, like not covered, maybe we need to, to have some API surface which we use so we understand what we actually need to do with our things. Uh, and uh, once we know that, we can have uh, some abstractions which have meaning because uh, without actual use case we won't be able to understand how we want to abstract things. And why I want to abstract it in the first place, because uh, it's just easier to build on top of that. For example, here I have like 646 lines and I believe uh, all of this can be done in maybe 200-300 lines without all this extra stuff. But it will be very useful in the future because we already uh, very strictly uh, like very strictly follow the API boundaries between different objects and we know what they know, what they can manage and so on and so forth. Well, it's pretty basic stuff, like uh, I believe it's no magic. We just try to do things uh, naturally, but a little bit more on the design uh, side. So yeah. Uh, okay, so I believe we can and here now, uh, thank you for everyone who was there and uh, have a good day. Okay, bye.